Hello, and welcome. I haven't done one of these for a while, but if you haven't seen any of my uh, beer and nattering sessions, um, then um, you probably won't be fully aware that there may be some adult themes discussed. Nothing offensive, but maybe some just adult themes. So best not let the kids watch it, eh? Where are we? Middle of August. It is the 14th of August. 2020 something or other. Year zero. Or is it year one? I don't know. Covid and all that. Yes. <clears throat> so one thing I try not to discuss on this channel. I'll tell you what we need to do first of all. Let's choose a beer. So there's a few lined up over here. I'm going to go for... I'm going to hit it hard. I'm going to go for an old thumper to start off with. There we are. Old Thumper. Ringwood Brewery. 5.1%. Full of flavour craft ale. Yes. Check that beauty out. Uh, drink responsibly. <laughs> I think you need to be responsible to drink responsibly. Yes. Indeed. Absolutely right. Just pour this into my ancient beer jug. One pint glass. It's not bad. Oh my goodness, that's good. Oh yes. Yes, 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 yes. Oh. Anyway. I've been through all the previous episodes. I think there's six so far. Trying to work out what I've discussed and what I haven't discussed. Um, and there's one thing I definitely haven't discussed. Uh, and that, that really is kind of where we are right now. UK PLC. Out of Europe. Not out of Europe. Out of the EU. Let's put it right. The Daily Mail and everyone else wants to believe we're out of Europe. No, 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 no. We're not out of Europe. We're still part of Europe. Just out of the uh, the EU. And I, I, don't, I don't go into politics here. So don't don't switch off. I'm not going to go all political on you uh, there is one channel i do quite like to follow on youtube and that's uh, that's jeff taylor um he seems to find facts report those facts give his opinion and then close um and i quite like that in it as an approach to kind of youtube journalism it's far far better than kind of watching some of the uh, mainstream channels which seem to be um more woke. Now, I think oh, it's one thing that pisses me off, I'm afraid. Political correctness used to piss me off. And not because I dislike political correctness, because, you know, I think political correctness has its place. Um, but you wouldn't normally kind of <laughs> find yourself in a world of trouble for stating an opinion that was politically correct. However, this whole woke thing, oh, I don't know. I'm not criticising the people that follow it because you've got to follow something, haven't you? Um, but there's inconsistencies and there's, you know, I just don't like any of it. It's just, to me, it's a load of bollocks. Um, and we had a big old family party down at my dad's um, in, in Devon. It's good, actually. We've got the whole family together. And I kind of have conversations with other adults. And more often than not, the other adults think, yeah, that's a good, valid point. But when you speak to, you know, the younger generation, my cousins, kids and so forth, they think I'm some sort of dinosaur. You know, they're trying to goad me into my opinions on St. Louis of Woke. And, um, you know, because I think, Lewis Hamilton, let's get the elephant in the room. Lewis Hamilton, what an amazing, amazing racing driver he's just outstanding just really 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 talented and you know so lucky to be where he is with the sponsorship that he's had throughout his career throughout his life comes from a position really of either great luck or great privilege whichever way you want to look at it i don't know but he's an outstanding and highly talented driver and deserves every accolade he gets on the racing track but off the racing track, I find some of his viewpoints um, somewhat hypocritical. And there are 
videos out there. I mean, when spitting image takes the piss out of you, you know you're kind of like a target for it, really, don't you? Um, and I've got friends of mine that say, no, 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 you, you can't, you can't knock Saint Louis of Woke. And I, it's a joke. I call him Saint Louis of Woke just to piss people off that are just totally kind of swallowed up by this whole mentality. It's bizarre. It really is bizarre. And I'm not going to go into the background or, or, or you know, or, or in the, um, into how it all kicked off, but it just seems to be now that just because one person says very, very, very loudly their opinion, no one else is allowed to disagree. Otherwise, you get cancelled or you get, I don't know, something will happen. Global warming, that'll be it. Yeah, if you don't agree with them, yeah, we get global warming. And this is how ridiculous it's all become. Opinions are allowed. You can't shut people down. You don't agree with the vaccine? Great. I don't particularly believe in the vaccine. I've been double stabbed. I think it was developed far too quickly. I mean, I've got all sorts of conspiracies that I hear about the COVIDs, and I'm not going to go anywhere near any of those because that'll end up with this video being cancelled and me thrown off YouTube for daring to suggest. But I found it a little bit interesting that right at the beginning of all this Ofcom changed their broadcasting rules to the mainstream broadcasters to say that uh, they were not allowed to disagree with the government's position on, on how the pandemic is being dealt with and handled. Well that's an interesting one isn't it? Mm. So you're throttling the media. Anyway, I'm not going to go any further on to that. The, um, the conversation I have, uh, my, my youngest son, you probably, I don't know if you know, but my youngest son, he's, um, he's at Oxford studying geography, reading geography. I don't know. I don't know. He's at Oxford. I didn't, I didn't get the privilege of going to university. Um, I was clever enough, but to be honest, I found beer and cars and they were way more interesting than studying. So I sort of opted to get a job rather than finish my A-levels. But, uh... <laughs> My youngest son, he's quite quite good. He's a fantastic lad, really. But he's, he's he's very easy to get into a debate. Into a debate, and once we're into a debate, um, it's his viewpoint is correct, and everyone else is wrong. And I think this is kind of instilled into the younger generations. I mean, it's great to be young and to be confident and to have your own opinions and be vocal and everything about your opinions. But when the opinion can be shot down by an idiot like me, justifiably. No, not justifiably is the wrong way. I'll, I'll go into the, the, the exact situation. But when it can be shot down, and then the rather than defending the position, they just turn into personal insults. Well, you're a racist. I'm not a racist. Far from it. Never been a racist. Oh, I don't understand. It's... Um, it's I've done an awful lot of psychological profiling in my life um, about understanding uh, really uh, psychological profiles of individuals and how those people behave under certain conditions. Um, and it's quite easy when you know the signals to, to read those behaviours and then understand exactly how to either pacify or aggravate those behaviours, depending on whether you want to work with those person or just generally piss them off. So I'm a little bit playful sometimes. But the, 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 the debate from young his son, I'm not going to say his name, poor lad. He's a great lad. He really is. <laughs> he's super. I can't believe he's my son. Doesn't swear anywhere near as much as I do. He farts as much as I do. But it was all centred around this Cecil Rhodes statue on Oriel College. He doesn't go to Oriel College, but the Cecil Rhodes statue... And how it is that there's a vocal minority of lecturers, students, undergrads, postgraduates, whatever, that say that it's inappropriate and should be removed. So that's fine. You're allowed a viewpoint. Absolutely. This is what we're fighting, that people are allowed a viewpoint. But just because you've got a viewpoint, that doesn't mean other people's viewpoints are incorrect or correct. It just makes it's, it's open for debate. So my question really um, to, to my lad was um, well why why does it need to be removed and the first answer came back uh, well 
they, they believe that he was a slave trader. Well, I'll tell you what, he wasn't. He was lots of things. And I, don't, I don't believe that he was. <laughs> it's, yeah, <laughs> just mind boggled. But then it quickly came back. Oh, no, he's a colonialist. Well, that's fantastic, because just about everyone in this country up until 1939 was also involved in UK PLC empire. Um, and, yeah, probably could have been tagged as a colonialist. But does that make someone bad? I don't think so. I'm mature enough. Well, he's not current. Well, lots of things aren't current. Should we just tear everything down? Should we just destroy all our history? Should we end up, I don't know, something terrible like, you know, the, the, the situation that occurred in Cambodia with Pol Pot and the Khmer Rouge? It was just horrific circumstances behind that, but basically just wiped all of the history out. Started at year, you know, day one, year one, year zero, whatever they called it. Horrendous. All academics were wiped out. There we are. If you wore glasses, you were wiped out. Wanted to take everything back to whatever. I don't know. I don't know enough about this, the Khmer Rouge. I remember it all occurring because I was watching Blue Peter in the 1970s when they were talking about it. And then, of course, then watched Killing Fields. Great film. Watch The Killing Fields if you want to know about the Khmer Rouge. Outstanding film. I've lost my train of thought now. I'm going to have a sip of beer. That'll get me back on track. So, yeah. So the debate, really, about Cecil Rhodes, first of all, um, put an enormous amount of funding into that particular college. So because the statue is no longer relevant, should we, therefore, give all the money back to the family? Because I believe the statue is relevant. When things are outside our living memory, then you need something to remind you. Now, 17th, 18th, 19th century, they didn't have things like film or photographs, or they did towards the end of the 19th century, or photographs. You could go and watch a nice film, provided it wasn't like U571, which is just an absolute farce. Hollywood found the Enigma machine. Great. Well done, chaps. Um... I can't imagine if they'd done Battle of Britain. America would have got into the World War two years earlier. Um, so, I've lost my train of thought again. <laughs> I'm going to give myself one out of ten for this rant, I tell you. But, you know, I, I, I'm not going to go into Cecil Rhodes. Google him. I'm sure there's books about Cecil Rhodes. You know, there was a big joke about when Boris Johnson became the, forest, the Foreign Secretary and uh, he's looking at a computer as a Foreign Secretary under David Cameron, I believe. Or it might have been Theresa May, but... Um, and he's looking at a computer with a puzzled look on his face and the meme was, what the fuck happened to Rhodesia? You know, <laughs> it was quite amusing. I'm sure all my sons have been drawing air through their lips. Can't say that, Dad. Can't say what? Anyway, so, so I, I started this debate, really, with Louis about... I've said his name now. It's Louis. Um, so I started this debate with him um, about... And it's not Louis. This is just general. This is representative of the, you know, half a dozen younger generation that we saw at the party. And, and just in general, we just like, you know, you speak to younger people, they seem to find me some sort of amusing dinosaur who has views that you know, aren't left-wing, violently left-wing. My views aren't violently right-wing either. My views, if anything, are centrist. It's probably a word you're not allowed to use anymore as well. But anyway, we had this conversation. Right, OK, so if Cecil Rhodes and all of the uh, kind of uh, colonial activities that Cecil Rhodes did um, are no longer relevant, then why is Admiral Lord Nelson relevant? Should we not kind of, you know, get rid of Nelson's column? We, we could build a tower block there instead. It's much more relevant or any of the, you know, historical monuments that we've got around this country. Let, let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of Stonehenge. It's irrelevant. We don't even know what it is anyway. Let's build a car park. Who gets to decide what history is relevant and what history is irrelevant? Personally, I haven't seen anything that suggests that Cecil Rhodes was anything other than a person of his time. Edward Colston, similarly, um, he was the chap who had his statue thrown into the harbour um, in Bristol by a load of people that were conveniently ignoring 21st century slavery. 
They all got carried away with the moot. It was a big party. Everyone was fed up with fucking lockdown. Everyone's fed up with wearing masks. Everyone's fed up with there's no bog rolls in the supermarket. And I think it's just it's just an explosion waiting to happen. It happens periodically. It's happened in London. It's happened in Liverpool. So it's, it keeps happening. People get pissed off and they blow off steam. And I think that's all that incident actually ended up being. Just people blowing off steam. Because <sighs> chucking someone in the harbour, a statue of someone in the harbour is... It's an unusual, unusual kind of way of saying things. Now, if it had been a statue of, you know, Pol Pot or Idi Amin or Adolf Hitler, then, yeah, throw it in the harbour. It's got no place in modern society. But someone who... And I've done a little bit of reading, because I had to. Was a slave trader. We don't know whether the slave trading was good or horrendous. I don't think any of it was good. It was definitely something that shouldn't have happened, but it did happen. And even Africans were involved in the slave trade. It's an inconvenient truth. But when Englandshire Parliament abolished slavery, OK, he took a lot of compensation out of the government because he no longer traded slaves. and He took a lot of compensation. But that compensation that he then ploughed back into charitable causes in Bristol, more or less created effectively what is modern Bristol. Now, a lot of people are going to say, oh, no, 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 you can't say that. He's a heretic. He's an you know, evil man, evil man. We should, we should, you know, dig up his corpse and hang him. Why? He was a man of his time. Should we not learn from history? Why can we not learn from history? Have a look. If you wipe out the actions of people like Sir Edward Colston, if you wipe out those actions and they're deleted from history, they're cancelled, then how are we to learn from that? How are we to stop it from happening again? It's a weird one, isn't it? And who was actually offended by it? Well, there's lots of people say they're offended by it, but they're not really offended by it. They're offended on behalf of someone else. And this is what woke is, I believe, my limited comprehension because let's face it i'm just a fucking dinosaur i'll be dead soon i'm sure i'm 54 now i'll be dead within the next 30 years there we are move over old man and let the young ones have their go well because of all pardon me all what's going on at the moment i really <laughs> i'm worried about the future of my pension fund uh, then oh there's another controversial thing i'm going to say now oh god I can see people ringing now, just... Oh. I'm not defending Edward Colston. I, there's just no way am I defending what he did. But he did an awful lot of good too. After the event. Not saying it's right, not saying it's wrong, but chucking the statue in the harbour. I'll tell you what's worse than that. It's dragging the statue out. And leaving it on its back in a museum, daubed in graffiti with all of the propaganda that was around it. And that's the only thing we learn now. It was thrown in the harbour because it was deemed offensive to someone. There's nothing up there, as, I, as I'm led to believe, nothing up there about his life, his you know, work, what he did, how he became an MP, blah de blah de blah de blah. <sighs> Should be absolutely pristine that statue we should be standing on a plinth inside the museum outside the museum i don't care to be quite honest i'm not offended by it but maybe the museum should have a section on the slave trade because let's face it bristol was founded on the fucking slave trade <sighs> so to pick on one statue rather than learning from it and making an exhibition about it and saying look this happened, and we're all a little bit of ashamed of it, and it shouldn't have happened, but this is what caused the demise of the slave trade in the UK. How the UK, I believe, pioneered the abolition. Great. More of this. So then, I think I'm going to have a Bengal Lancer now. Bengal Lancer is a Fuller's Brew. 
First time I saw my stag, by the way, when it was blue, and when it had the crushed driver's side front corner, was outside the uh, the Fuller's Brewery in Fulham. Bengal Lancer. It's an India Pale Ale, naturally. It is 5.3%. Whoa! These Pale Ales, they're not Session Ales, are they? Pursued, brewed beside the Thames since 1845. We used to watch the... Um, Boat race finished not not far up the river from this. I can't I can't read any of the words on the back. It's all just blurred now. I can read you the barcode. That would be useful, wouldn't it? Right, let's get the bastard open and pour it. Hey, it's a lively one. I don't know how many people are still watching. <laughs> I should imagine I've got like, you know, pissed a few people off. I don't mean to piss people off. I've got no intention to piss anyone off in my life. I really haven't. <sighs> Certainly don't want to piss off my kids. But sometimes, you know, you kind of need to, I should move this over here. This is, I'll just look at this actually. I need to put this up. I need to have this t-shirt made up, don't I? There we are. Never happy unless complaining. There you go. Sounds like my missus. Oh, I've said it. No, I can't say that. Can't say that. No, 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 no. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. I think live and let live. Live and let live. Anyway, enough of that bollocks. That's just boring bollocks, isn't it? There's just too much bollocks there. But it is something that just generally pisses me off. No, it doesn't actually piss me off. I don't even get as irritated as being pissed off. <sighs> oh dear, oh dear, I'm in trouble now. I was, um, someone sent round one of these um, little short videos on WhatsApp. And it was quite good, actually, because it was all of the um, the TV shows and the things that we used to do throughout the 1970s that have not been shut down as part of Operation U Tree. And there wasn't an awful lot left, actually, to be honest. But um, that was controversial, Richard. Um, but it was quite entertaining. And I was just watching these shows and just thinking, well, they couldn't make that again. No, they couldn't make that. They won't be able to make that can't make that no they wouldn't be able to do that no not that no 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 because there would be someone up in arms about it i'm not sure i fancy growing up in the uh, 21st century to be honest i mean i get to 54 i've been regressing since i was 11 years old i got to the point where i thought farts were funny um and uh i just stopped stopped maturing that that, that was it you know I've, uh, pardon me i've reached the pinnacle of my intellectual capacity here that farts are funny and therefore I don't need to worry about anything else. Farts are funny and fixing cars is a great job and I love my job. Really do. And I'm not a dinosaur. Well, I am a dinosaur, but I'm a friendly dinosaur. Not a cuddly dinosaur, because that would be weird. Reptile things, cold-blooded. No, I'm not a dinosaur then, am I? What am I? Well, certainly not this beer. Oh, my goodness, that's nice. I've completely dried up on questions from you folk. So, not an awful lot's really come out. I mean, people are asking me technical questions, and I do little videos on the channel about how to do certain things. One of the ones you, you saw last week was uh, all about the indicator flashing units on Lucas systems, which, <laughs> well, especially when all the smoke's leaked out, then kind of, you, you've got to, pump more smoke back into the loom again because all the smoke's gone but there's been no why are you such a dinosaur type questions <laughs> i'm not a dinosaur <sighs> very naughty boy there we are name the film <clears throat> oh dearie me well we're, we're, i suppose because i'm british i'm a european british person that, um, you know, we do, do love discussing the weather. And it has been shit this month. 
was shit last month. Apparently it's the hottest month in the planet ever since records began 50 years ago. <laughs> Again, it's just... I gave up watching the news and I gave up um, reading the papers. Um, probably about four years, five years ago now. I'm a lot happier as a result. There's uh, certain tabloid papers. Tabloid papers are the short, kind of little tiny things. You can read it with two hands sitting on the toilet, and then you can actually tear it into strips and wipe your ass with it afterwards. But some of the tabloids, you've got two different tabloids in the UK, two different types of tabloids. You've got the red tops, like the sun, the star, the mirror, because they've got a red logo at the top. It's nothing to do with, you know, communism or left wing or anything like that. Nothing to do with that. Just got the, just called the red tops. Um, and then you've got the other papers, which think that they are intellectually challenging, but to be honest, they're no better than the broadsheets. And the broadsheets are the big bastards, like the Financial Times and the Telegraph, Grawniad, <coughs> Independent, and so forth. But some of the tabloids, the non-red top tabloids, because let's face it, you just look at the red top tab tabloids uh, for, for the tits, to be honest. There'll be some sensationalist story in there, which will invariably end up with a story about tits <laughs> now they've banned that sorry no i've got to take that back they've banned it uh, page three in the sun has gone the color tits in the star they've gone deemed offensive there you go to all those lasses that used to get their tumblers out for us lot to look at all at half past seven saturday 14th of august used to get their tumblers out for us lot us lot. <laughs> Sounds quite weird, doesn't it? They used to get their tumblers out for the tabloids, for the red top tabloids. They, they've all, they've, I don't know, they've all lost their jobs. What are they doing now? Well, I don't know. They lost a career. They can't do that anymore. What are they going to do now? I'm what, uh, squeaky again. I'm worried about them. What happened to them? They had a nice job, a nice cushy number. But someone deemed it offensive and therefore it was cancelled. That happened a long time ago as well. As did the um, the, 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 the kind of the grid, um, the grid marker ladies. Who used to stand there in their hot pants and their kind of t-shirts tied up underneath their upper bottoms. I don't know, tits. I'm going to say tits. <sighs> Standing there, looking attractive. And Lewis Hamilton's in the car, thinking, she's got a mighty fur pert bottom. I expect he wasn't. I expect he was thinking, it's outrageous. It is out... I am outraged. From my tax haven. But anyway, like I said, Lewis Hamilton is fantastic. He is the best racing driver this country has ever produced. But I think he comes a damn... It's a minuscule, to me, a minuscule fraction above someone like Jim Clark. So Jim Clark, I think he was lost before his time. But the man was a genius at the wheel. I never saw him race. Too young. I'm, I am too young. Believe it or not, at 54 years old, I'm, I am too young. But what I've seen, what I've read, the man was an absolute genius. And I'm not so sure. I, well, I don't know. I think when it comes to motorsport, one of the big problems is levelling the playing field. Um, um, when you are an exceptional driver, are you still an exceptional driver when you're in a mediocre car, not the best car? Well, we saw at the beginning of this season that um, Lewis wasn't quite as good as some of the other competitors. The car was less good, but, and this is why I think he's exceptional, he maintained that position so that when the technology levelled and the playing field levelled, he was able at the last race to come from last position, finished in fourth, I believe. I listened to it on the radio. I was driving, so I listened to it on the radio. And it, it, it was just such an exciting race to listen to. I suggest you do that. If you're bored with Formula One, listen to it on the radio. Forget all the sponsors, all the pretty pictures. Well, you're not going to see any pretty girls in the pit lane anymore because that's been outlawed. But, you know, 
Or pretty boys, if you're that way inclined. Again, I don't care. Live and let live. This Bengal Lancer is strong. <laughs> but listen to it on the radio. Listen, listen to the commentary. I think it was Five Live I listened to it on. So enthusiastic. I think the problem I've got is I was brought up. So not the problem. There's no problems. <laughs> the problems are with the people who don't agree with me. There you go. You don't like it when it comes back. Anyway, no, I think I think the issue has been that I'm of a generation that was brought up listening to Murray Walker. And I can't. I find Martin Brundle's commentary less enthusiastic. I find anyone who commentates on Formula One, on the TV, whatever channel, they're just not a patch on what Murray used to do. He used to get himself so excited. He'd get all the words in the wrong order. He'd make it get... Up. There was... I'll go back a few years now. I was living in South London at the time, so this would be 83, 80, maybe 82. 82, 83. British Grand Prix. I think it was a British Grand Prix. Might be wrong there, actually. But anyway, the race had started. It was a complete clusterfuck. Half the field wiped out. And so BBC at the time decided to broadcast one of the, uh, the, the, you know, the support races. Um, and it was a, a period when James Hunt, rest in peace, sir, another great, great, great driver. He hit the target uh, and gave up. That was it. Well, I've done it. I've done that. I'll move on. Superb racing driver. Watch Rush. It's really, really interesting. Kind of backs up most of what I thought about Mr. Hunt. Superb racing driver. But, you know, <laughs> chap who turns up five minutes before the race starts and buggers off the second, the, you know, checker flags dropped. <laughs> and he's, he's chasing a tail somewhere. <laughs> the man was a legend. Absolute legend. And I'm sure that's going to be outlawed soon. It won't be long before we're all forced to kind of like, you know, the mangina. You know, you kind of like, we saw it on um, Silence of the Lambs. Couldn't make that again. Couldn't make that again. No, no, no. Wouldn't be allowed to make that anymore. What was I chuntering about? Anyway, so they did this support race. And it was, um, I don't know, Formula whatever. And Murray was doing his usual enthusiastic um, assessment of what was actually happening on the track. Um, and it was drawing towards a conclusion on this particular race. And J James uh, clearly just walked into the commentary box, <laughs> probably with a very large brandy and a couple of girls. <laughs> I, I, I wish. And all you heard on the TV is Murray stopped to draw breath. And James said something along the lines of, I think you're talking a load of bollocks, Murray. And that was it. That was just like, you know, <laughs> right, we're going to move on to the race now. We're gonna... <laughs> BBC had pre-recorded it. They hadn't set, checked it out. James had obviously wandered into the studio and that was it. <sighs> I didn't video it. Someone out there must have seen that, must have videoed that. Maybe spit me horlicks. That's not a euphemism. Oof. Um, but, oh, I don't know. So I was brought up in the 1970s when... So, right, so I am a dinosaur because nothing's improved in this country ever. And we were just as bad as we always have been since the colonial days. We are as bad as we ever have been. Well, how come half the TV that I was watching when I was a lad growing up is no longer allowed to be broadcast? Don't know. I must admit, I have got no idea how they ever thought the Black and White Minstrels was good. This is Black and White Minstrels was a load of uh, um, generally, I believe they were all white, black faced up uh, uh, song and dance routine. And it was prime time. Saturday night, early evening. I remember thinking at the time, this is odd. What wasn't old was Eric and Ernie, who used to share a bed 
on the Eric and Ernie show, Mork and Why show. That wasn't odd. No, nothing odd about that at all. Natural, normal. There you go. So I'm not a dinosaur. I am a dinosaur. No, I'm not a dinosaur. I am a di not not. I am not a dinosaur. Does that work? I think that works. Um, how long we've we been going for? Oh, 20, oh, fucking 45 minutes. No, that's not right. 32 minutes. There we are. Well, <clears throat> I think that's enough. It's bollocks from me. <laughs> like I say, I've got no intention to offend anyone. Uh, it used to be our motto at Le Mans that we have no intention to offend anyone. So if you find yourself offended, these are you problems, not us problems. Um, and I think there needs to be more in life these days that are common sense. And, you know, perhaps Edward Colston's statue should have been removed from its plinth decades ago when people started getting all woke about it, before woke was even invented. I don't even know who, who invented woke. Where the fuck did it come from? It's a horrible word. Don't like it. Um, but before people started getting... Cause People get offended by something. Well, I don't know. I know that the, um, the, the, the our, our outstanding mayor of London. Thank God I don't live in London. Um, I mentioned God. Yes, I'm a Christian. So there you go. Um, that well, that'll be I won't be banned now. Oh no, I can't do that. I'm white, middle aged, middle class, Christian. I can just see the word gammon appearing across the screen. Now, that's, not that's not offensive, you see. That's not offensive. To the people that are casting, I couldn't give a shit. Call me what you like. <laughs> I don't know. This is good. I like this Bengal Lancer. Now, surely Bengal Lancers, this is colonial too. Is this not colonial? I don't know. I'd need to watch Carry On at the Khyber again. <laughs> if you haven't watched it, don't. <laughs> it's awful. There was something about 1970s Carry On films that was, it, it was just outstanding. It really was. And my dad, he was a little bit older. But he used to listen to things like Round the Horn on, on the radio and the Goon Show and stuff like that. And I think, Kind of the Carry On films of the 70s and early 80s. Right up until Carry On Columbus, which I actually walked out of the cinema on. <laughs> Carry On Columbus was shit. They were all shit, but Carry On Columbus was really shit. Right, we've been slow drinking, we've been busy talking. This bastard's called... Atlantic Pale Ale. Now, I think this one is, is tropical and refreshing. Tropical and refreshing. Where's brewery? Sharps. Oh, there you go. That's more of a conglomerate, isn't it? Sharps Brewery. Sharps Brewery. Why did... <clears throat> one thing that did happen in the early 70s was that I actually earned pocket money by going in and tizer bottles and any other bottle and, and out of the hedge or out of people's bins and taking them back to the local co-op and getting my like tuppence deposit bag. Why do the why can we not reuse this? Why can I not take these bottles back to I bought these at the co-op. Why can I not take these bottles back to the co-op and they put them in crates and they send them back to the brewery send them back to the breweries. I might have edit that one out. Why can I not, when I finished consuming my beer, I've got two empties here now, I've got an Abbott over there as well, which I didn't do. This was been done some time ago. <laughs> you can tell it's got mould in the bottom. Why can I not take the bottles back to the co-op and put them in crates, send them back to the brewers and they refill them? What does it take to create a bottle? I'd imagine an incredible amount of heat. Some raw materials. I know they recycle it, but you know you've got a bottle there, which if it was steam cleaned, labels taken off, blah 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 blah. I don't think we need to standardise on bottles. I mean, looking at this, 
I've got three bottles and all of them are different. Ding, ding, ding. Let me just go up here. All three of these bottles are different. The neck's different. Some of them have got the uh, brewery embossed into the glass. So I'm guessing these bottles are probably made... I'm going to say it. Chineseium. There'll be someone. Because cause we, we're a net importer in this country. We no longer... We used to make the world. And we no longer do anything in this country. Well, I make Range Rovers. I love my job. But why can this bottle not be reproduced? At least it's not white fucking plastic. White plastic is a bad thing. Post your white plastic back to Tesco's or whoever the supermarket is. I, I'm, no, 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 I'm not going to go inside there. Um, but that bottle could easily be crated up, sent back to the brewery. They could clean them, refill them, send them back out again. No, we chuck them in our blue recycle bin. They get crunched up and... Oh, I don't know. I don't know what actually happens to it. There was a phase here in Wickhamshire. I'll open this Atlantic Pale Ale. Uh, there was a phase where uh, we had to separate all our kind of paper, cardboard, plastic, metal, everything. Everything had to be separated. And one day, on collection day, I just happened to be here because I was still working at the point. Um, and uh, I'm still working. I'm still working now. <clears throat> but I was working in IT at the time. And I just happened to be here when the collection company turned up. And they just lobbed everything into the same fucking truck. The same hole. It's not like they segregated it inside the truck. I've got a throw it on me. Um, and <sighs> what's the point of me segregating it when you're just going to chuck it all into the same fucking truck? I'm all up for, you know, minimising my um, impact on the environment, which is why I don't like the fact that I buy a glass bottle of beer and it gets broken and recycled into another glass beer bottle. Probably because we send pallets of crunched up glass in container ships that do one foot to the ton of heavy oil on a container ship back to China where they can use all of their coal-fired power stations. All of this is kind of allegedly... Um, to rebuild the bottles. Sorry, I shouldn't say China, should I? Because I'd be banned for that as well. Sent back to somewhere else on a container ship that does one foot to the ton of heavy oil. That's made up too. <sighs> this was the Atlantic Pale Ale Sharps. Put your writing bit up. Maybe I should get better glasses. What's it say? It says my arms are almost like... Here we are. The Atlantic Ocean, dynamic and constantly moving. It's water. <clears throat> Possesses an energy which shapes and inspires the way we brew Atlantic Pale Ale. This is the biggest load of cack I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> Showcases... The citrus aromas and flavours of American hops without the intense bitterness sometimes associated with New World Pale Ales. Well, I'll tell you what, the Bengal Lancer was a good pale ale. This one is more of a... Oh, this is 4.5%. Sorry, I've got hickety uppities now. Because I was just kind of... I, I think I snorted at the bollocks that was on the back of this bottle. If I'd have read that shit when I first bought it, I'm like, come on, chaps, really? <laughs> but this is an energy which shapes and inspires the way we brew. <laughs> Please drink responsibly. Well, they're not brewing very responsibly, are they? I've got to break the fucking bottle before I send it back. Right, I'm going to try this now. It's all right. Hasn't got the kick in the... Um, 
kicking the Adam's apple like the Bengal Lancer's got. The Bengal Lancer's a nice IPA, that. I'm going to get some more of those. I've not seen that for a while. It was down at the co-op, so I think I'll do some more of those. Uh, no, that was the Asda one. Was, oh, fucking hell. Balls that up now. No product placement in this video. Tropical and refreshing. Tropical? No, I'm still sitting in a shitty shed in England. Uh, refreshing. If it was cold, it might be. Well, I think next time I get out of rock, I'm going to have a chat with these chaps. Chaps, it's bollocks. And on that note, so is this. <clears throat> I think uh, we'll, we'll, we will draw a close to this proceeding. Um, and uh, I shall bid you all a very, very happy morning, afternoon, lunchtime, evening, whatever, night. Depending on when you're watching it. And uh, I have to be in the right sort of mood to do these videos. Uh, and I've not been in the right sort of mood for quite some time now. There's been an awful lot going on. And, you know... I hope you're all keeping yourselves together because, you know, Corona bollocks is really, you know, it's driving everyone at the bloody wall. As is, you know, behaviours of lots of people that are making a shitload of noise, as am I right now. So I'm probably pissing off people now. So I've become one of the people now that's pissing me off. Oh, for heaven's sake. Let's see how far I can get this screwdriver at my nostril. Um... I don't even know where that came from. Richard, you're going to have to edit that out. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Anyway, thank you for watching. I really do appreciate it. Um, if you fancy donating to the channel, not necessarily to buy me beer, but donating to the channel, and I accept um, uh, uh, physical donations... That sounded odd, didn't it? It sounds like I'm going to get a poo now. Um, but people post me parts that they don't don't no longer need. Uh, so, so if any rate, you know, I give them shouts out when, when, when it occurs. So um, if you've got a load of old Land Rover, Range Rover parts that you just, or Mitsubishi L200 animal parts that you just don't need um, and you're prepared to take them to the tip, then send them to me because if they're really good, I won't tip them. I tend to, as, as you well know, I... I that was a big long burp. Sorry about that. I try and keep things going as long as I possibly can. The longer something is usable for, the less its impact of its creation becomes upon society, which is my mantra, really. There you go. But if you want to donate, there is a PayPal me link thing down here. Or contact me, Church House Classics. It's all one word at gmail.com um and uh yeah enjoy your lives didn't that, that that's that's not a terminal statement that's just like you know get the best out of your life you possibly can shits and giggles find the best things to sometimes it's fucking difficult I'm, I'm ranting now sometimes it's fucking difficult to find things to amuse you and to laugh at my boys are my inspiration my boys are with my missus. She made them. I kind of just did the fun bit. Um, but, you know, I think that, you know, they're, they're, they're outstanding. They really are. All three of them. Absolutely outstanding. Human beings. I'm confident that our future is in safe hands. Once they get over these woke socialist ideologies, things that they've got going on at the moment, but they will happen. Cheers.